Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and I'm going to do a short video here about setting up the Epson P900. Now, the P900 is an A2 17 inch printer. If you're looking for something a bit smaller, I've already looked at the P700 from Epson, which is an A3 plus 13 inch printer. And once this is set up, I'm going to be doing quite a detailed review of it. And I'll also be doing a comparison between the P700 and the P900 for those of you not sure which to get. But anyway, this is how to get this thing working. So off we go. Well, first thing out of the box is this smaller black box. Inside it, we have the setup instructions. Now, these are pretty basic. They're in lots of different languages. Um, guide to ink. CD printer. This allows you to print onto printable CDs, DVDs. And more importantly, we have the inks. These will need installing shortly, and I'll show that as part of the setup process. But you don't put them in before starting it up. You start the printer up and then follow the instructions, but I'll show that in a bit. Now, unfortunately, I unplugged the microphone by mistake for this next bit, but uh, it's only about a minute's worth. So there's the mains lead you get with it. There's the spare maintenance cartridge. Now, the maintenance cartridge gets filled during setup. Uh, there is one installed in it, uh, and this is a spare. Uh, you'll probably need this relatively quickly after setting the printer up. But don't bother getting another maintenance cartridge because they last for ages. Now I'm just going to remove some of the blue tape and there is a lot of blue tape to be removed. Uh, take some of the various warning labels and more blue tape off the top. Notice the clear plastic on the top. That's there to protect the, uh, the plastic top of the printer, which is surprisingly easy to scratch. Now, when you take off these bits of tape, they allow you to open it up and surprise, surprise, there's more tape inside. Uh, you will end up with a lot of this sort of stuff. I'll just move that bit off there. And this is opening up the front where the ink cartridge is going to have to go. And uh, there is the maintenance cartridge. This is the original one that's fitted, not the spare. And you, at a certain point, get all of that off and go around the back as well, because there's more bits of tape. Uh, this is the plate that covers the opening at the back. Right, now I've got all the packaging taken away. Um, I've plugged the printer in. I've done nothing else to it. We've not installed any software or done anything. This is switching the printer on for the first time. So I flip the screen up. And we'll see what happens. A promising sign. I think we'll have it in English. It's a touch screen, so I can just press the buttons. Daylight saving time. Well, yes, we've got that. There we go. Initialization starts, install the ink cartridges. So that's all you need to do, set the date and time and everything, and away you go. Uh, there is a how-to guide that shows you how to install the cartridges. It's not difficult. Uh, it steps through things. We'll close that and we will put OK. The cover's opened. Here are the ink carts. Um, I've shaken them first. And the ink carts just go in, there's no particular order. Take this one, matte MK ink, put that one in there. PK, gray, light gray. Cyan, Vivid Magenta, Light Cyan, Vivid Light Magenta, 
yellow and lastly the violet ink which is a new ink in this model of printer. Um, the ink cartridge size, um, they are identical to the P700. Unfortunately, they are not swappable, so you can't use the larger carts of the P900 in the P700. Something I'll come back to in the review, but uh, there is no physical difference that you can see between the types of carts. So I just put this violet one in. There we go, we've put all the carts in. I need to shut the cover and leave it to go. At this point, there's nothing more to do other than wait 15 minutes or so whilst it does all what it does. And uh, so we'll just leave it to do its stuff. This uh, will gradually move across. Mm, takes 15 minutes, so it says. Certainly with the P700, the timings I saw on it were pretty accurate, so I'm going to assume it's 15 minutes. I'm not going to leave this running for 15 minutes, we'll come back when it's done. Uh, just one important note about this process. Do not open any of the covers. Do not lift something to have a look at it. Do not try and add the network cables or anything, because this is the most vulnerable time of the printer when it's first setting up. If you open covers, it will interrupt the process, it will get lost, it won't know what to do, and it will attempt to restart the process, and that will just simply waste ink. Now, I've done this before on printers, uh, not deliberately, I should add, uh, but it's not a good thing. When it says leave the printer alone, leave well alone. and it makes some interesting noises as well. There we are, a uh, quarter of an hour later. The print is done. Um, it is now set up, ready to connect to the computer, ready to use. Effectively, that's it, it's installed. Uh, we've got the main menu here, but the next stage moves over to my laptop where I'm gonna put the driver in and connect it to the printer and do a test print and see whether it works. I've got the printer started up. I'm going to be connecting it up to my laptop. I've fired up the Epson install software and the first thing it's done is it's looked at the environment, or networking environment, and it's found a printer that can connect to the Wi-Fi network. Now, I would normally use Ethernet to connect up printers, but wireless works just as well here. It doesn't work all over the house so well, and I happen to have gigabit Ethernet uh, around the house connecting up various computers and servers. So I would normally use an Ethernet connection for this. But I will just go, we will start this connection automatically. Well, it would seem it was worth waiting because I've now got a message come up telling me that uh, it's been detected. I'm now offered an opportunity to in select software to install. The printer driver happens to already be on this laptop because this is what I used for setting up the P700. And the P700, P900 are very similar, so they use the same driver. There are just obviously a few differences. This is wider, but they're quite similar. So all this software is asking me to install is the manual for the latest version of the manual for the printer and the software update. Now, that anything else is already installed here, but have a look at the options and see what you want. Now, I'm doing this on a Mac, uh, not a particularly new Mac, but it works just fine. It'll obviously be different if you're doing this on a Windows system, but uh, we've only got Macs here, so I'm afraid that's all you get. Now, Strangely enough, it tells me that I need to update the firmware. This often happens with new printers. There's a delay between printers being packaged in the factory and sent out. And in that time with a new printer, there may well be firmware updates. I've had well over a dozen updates of the firmware for the P700 since I've had it quite a while. It was a very early version of the printer. So during the time that it's taken from the, for, the fact, for the printer to leave the factory and make its way here, there are new updates. So I would always suggest install the updates. They do make quite a difference sometimes. Although it would be helpful if printer manufacturers actually told you what the firmware updates fixed. Now the printer has woken up. 
and it says preparing for firmware update. The fact that there is only a wireless connection between this and the laptop suggests that everything's working. But remember that from that initial scan, it can sometimes take a while. So uh, if nothing happens within a minute when you're testing stuff, give it a bit longer during this setup phase. Once again, with updating firmware, just like the initial setup, don't do anything to the printer whilst it's doing this. Um, it probably won't, but if you want the best time to brick your printer, in other words, render it inoperative completely, pulling the plug whilst it's updating firmware is probably the most efficient way of doing it. So just leave it be. Don't open any panels. Don't do anything. Just leave it be. After a few minutes, the printer restarts. Do I want to register the printer? Yeah, well, remind me later. No, thank you. Just one final thing. Uh, here's the printer I've opened it up. I just want to do a quick nozzle check. Um, this is the basic confirmation that uh, the printer's actually working. So I can, I've put a piece of paper in, it wants to know the paper type. It's plain paper, so I'll select plain paper, plain bright, bright white paper. It's A4, we're okay there. I'll go to the menu, go to maintenance, print nozzle head check, and go. And hopefully, the printer should load that sheet of paper and we'll get a test check. There's a light inside here, optional light, so you can actually see the print whilst it's being printed. And I can see that it's printed the nozzle check. And there we have it. Perfect nozzle check. The printer's fine. I can now get on with setting up other things and doing testing. I hope you found the uh, quick setup guide here of interest. Uh, there will in due course be a complete review. Uh, the detailed review will be on the Northlight website, but I will be doing an overview video as well on YouTube. Um, I would say, however, that the really detailed stuff always goes into the written reviews, which is why they're so long, and which is another reason for doing the YouTube videos, I suppose, because some people prefer those. But I uh, hope this has been of some use to you. Thank you.